Next, I'm pleased to introduce Maynard Holliday. Um, he has worked as a senior engineering and robotics professional in government and the private sector for the last 25 plus years. He has extensive experience in managing interdisciplinary projects of international and commercial importance at the Lawrence Livermore and Sandia National Labs and at various robotic startups. Maynard assembled and led the joint Department of Energy, NASA International Pioneer Project team that designed and fabricated a radiation-hardened telerobot mobile, mobile ve vehicle at Chernobyl Unit 4. His ongoing civic engagement includes teaching robotics through the Citizen Schools Program in East Oakland, California, for which he has received multiple awards. And finally, he holds the distinction of having the presentation with the longest title. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, good to be here. I feel I'm a little bit slandered by the people who were uh, ahead of me. I'm from the DOE. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. I'm at the Pentagon. Um, so I'm going to talk about a State Department project that was funded last year to look at the web and see how it could tell us about uh, arms control compliance and uh, whether uh, people were cheating or uh, intentional attacks out there. Um, and we work with an interesting company, Recorded Future, that is the only company funded by both Intutel, the CIA's venture arm, and Google Ventures. So very interesting uh, company. Um, and, uh, and so we are looking at multiple da data sources uh, to highlight events and trends that could expose uh, eminent treaty noncompliance or breaches or technical breakout. And so the tool did natural language processing in six strategic languages. Arabic, Farsi, uh, Russian, Mandarin, Chinese. Uh, on the web, uh, the secret sauce here is a temporal analytics engine that structures your data in, um, in time uh, as well as uh, events and, uh, and people. And uh, how it's used currently in the public is uh, they have an amorphous Amazon cloud instance that uh, changes size based on usage, and they have 250K real-time sources in all these languages that are indexed uh, temporarily um, by event, by person, and, uh, and uh, event type. And so uh, we uh, used a closed version of it where we could hybridize the data with, a, um, with our classified sources and put that in the index and combine them with the, uh, with the open sources to, to get information. So text is loaded with tons of temporal signals. And again, this is part of the secret sauce. Um, you can extract uh, days of the week, you know, like next spring in the upper right there, Thursday, June 26th. And you can lay out what the web is telling you about the future. Um, and, um, and so, uh, you know, the algorithms organize, cluster, and score sentiment and momentum. And uh, uh, you can see, you know, a lot of companies are interested in, uh, you know, what Anonymous is doing, who they're going to hack. Apple uses this to look at uh, protests near their stores so they can go into lockdown mode because uh, the most valuable thing in the Apple store is the glass. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so what, <laughs> what's, what's new? Uh, is uh, 450,000 uh, web sources organized, organized and correlated um, entity types, uh, you know, this temporal component, so you can infer event times, publication dates. Um, we're ex extracted from the f full social media fire hose, averaging 500,000 collects per day, um, looking at uh, cyber and hacktivism, uh, looking at open message boards, um, so if you think, you know, we're looking at your Facebook page and it's public, you're, you're right, we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, this is a little busy, but uh, uh, the other powerful thing is you can tailor your so source material and include that in your index. And uh, so we, we tailored uh, source material that the State Department was looking at manually, and we were able to put that in the uh, uh, index as well. All right. All right, so, and then we added some very specialized um, text. Uh, this first one uh, by Kathleen Vogel uh, 
posited that uh, you know, Iraq could have never gotten chemical weapons because the, uh, the scientists did not have the pedigree uh, to uh, accomplish that task. So very interesting hypothesis. Um, uh, so uh, we did some test uh, cases, and so we looked at H7 and 9. Uh, we looked at the US meningitis outbreak as an analog for an intentional bioattack. And then we looked at the Shanghai pig die-off to uh, see if uh, you know, that was an indicator of you know, some clandestine Chinese uh, work. And so um, here's uh, some outputs, v again, very busy. But what we're looking at is a, a timeline um, where we, we see um, events spiking uh, around the uh, introduction of H7 and 9. And we, we find that in Chinese language reporting, it, it was really the expatriate Chinese language reporting that was reporting H7 and 9 first. Um, for the fungal meningitis outbreak, an interesting uh, result was we saw the um, uh, establishment of uh, patient support groups um, around clusters of people who came, uh, uh, were around uh, these uh, outbreaks. And uh, the river, uh, Wangpu River pig die-off, this is in Shanghai. Um, again, we saw Chinese language expatriate reporting, reporting about the, the river incident uh, or, you know, the, the, the pig die-off. And, um, and so uh, uh, potential WMD development indicators, you know, you can look for reports of animal deaths, noxious odors, unexplained hospitalizations, um, observed gaseous plumes, um, and, uh, you know, people tweet you know, about their ambient environment. And so this is, uh, you know, the things we we're, we're looking for. So what's next? Um, a truly hybridized index, uh, you know, classified, unclassified data stream, uh, out disease outbreak heat map, uh, custom watch boards, just looking at um, specific uh, events in, in regional uh, areas. And there's a pilot program going on in, in a US embassy in the Middle East. Um, and uh, conclusions, well, well worth the, uh, the modest investment um, uh, adopted for a, uh, a project at the DOD to look at open source information. Um, and uh, I encourage you to check it out on the web um, when you get a chance, because it's, uh, it's really cool. And uh, <laughs> these are the authors of the, uh, the books that we used uh, in digital format to augment our results. I think that's it. <laughs>